come up with something funny and not be swayed by like really fucked up things that are happening in the world. But this past week, y'all, this past week, you know, it started with Rachel Dolezal trying to look like me. <laughs> All my friends asking me, Khadija, so what's your family from? Is that really your black child? <laughs> then it just, it just, no, um, so, and so like I said, I was gonna sing songs for you all today, and I had a guitarist and had to tell him, man, don't come. <laughs> we ain't gonna be saying no happy shit. Um, so, when all of these things start happening, you go online and you try to find out what people are talking about, what people's thoughts are, and the first, the first place I go to is Facebook. How anybody here yeah. still on Facebook? Yeah. Young people try to act like, oh, who's on Facebook anymore? Yes. You old ass people that have ruined it for everybody. <laughs> but my old ass is on Facebook. And people post things and I am a voracious reader. And it will be the death of me because when you read those articles, where do you wind up at the end of that article? That goddamn comment section. In the comment section of bombsrising.org, who derailed an entire conversation regarding the Charleston, South Carolina murders and repeatedly posted, hashtag all lives matter. And I told my daughter that that was the title of this poem, and she said, yeah, that might be a little too long. So I'm going to call it Pink Dress. <laughs> Let us imagine pink dress ironed strictly, creases expelled into from its folds, covering knees bent in arthritic repose, back against few brown, dark, hard, hands folded, in a lap once reserved for grandbabies who now wear laps that nestle their own babies. Let us imagine a grandmother. Imagine her eyes closed as she whispers prayers, secrets she shares with the invisible God she has known since her brain could form words and her lips could utter sounds, eyes closed and in prayer. It is as if no one is around, even the click of the gun does not break her strident conversation. Her commune with God demands the best of concentration, but her ears cannot ignore the words blanketed in hate that punctuate the quiet that had laid so neatly before eyes sprang open, it is too late. Imagine the look of sheer terror. Imagine the fear and horror. Imagine the final plea for protection now at this intersection where church becomes the place she will die. Imagine the screams for compassion. Imagine the questions why. Let us imagine the pink dress. Let us imagine a grandmother in a pink dress, 87 years old, lived through lynchings from the 1920s, segregation and Jim Crow, survived lunch counter rebellions, Reaganomics and Cointel Pro, almost 90 years old. Imagine this grandmother, still a target because of the color of her skin. And then, I don't want to hear you mention type text or hashtag the words, all lives matter, ever again. And so I just wanted to um, just share the names of the people we lost. Um, and the person whose, that poem was, um, I thought of, was 87-year-old Susie Jackson, who was one of the victims last Wednesday. My great-grandmother's name was Susie. Um, she actually raised my mother before she was adopted at nine years nine years old. Before um, adopted at nine years old by my grandparents, and so when I saw the name Susie, at 87 years old, um, I was inspired to write about an, an elder who made it to live that long, only to be gunned down by such horrific violence. 
Um, Cynthia Hurd was 54 years old, Ethel Lance, 70. Reverend Japane Milton, doctor, was 49. The Honorable Reverend Clementa Pickney was 41 years old. Tywanza Sanders was the youngest at 26 years old. He was died protecting other family members. Reverend Daniel Simmons was 74. Reverend Sharonda Singleton was 45. And Myra Thompson was 59 years old. And I was dedicated to them.